الحمد لله الحمد لله العظيم الخبير المتعالي الحمد لله الذي لا تحجبه ظلمات الليالي الحمد لله الذي أرسل جبال العوالي سبحانه من إله عظيم يغفر الذنوب ولا يبالي لا إله إلا الله بها نحيا وبها نموت وبها نلقى الله وبها نوالي وأشهد أن عظيمنا وقدوتنا ومولانا قرة عيني محمد ابن عبد الله عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم فجزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن دعوته ورسالته أما بعد Ladies and gents before I start الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله that Allah رب العزة gave us time and respite to have in our lives and in our records a day that we dedicated it in its entirety to Allah and His Prophet. That Alhamdulillah, that when the sigils open, there will be this day here, that from its morning till afternoon, you are, in insha'Allah ta'ala, in the obedience of Allah Rabbul Izzah, remembering the beloved of the beloved. And you have come from far and wide and spent your hard-earned dollars in my Allah Rabbul Izza accepted from you and from us, insha'Allah ta'ala. My topic is a difficult one. It is a sad one. It is to cover the last days of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is even more sad after you've listened to him for a whole day and about him for the whole day. But let's start insha'Allah ta'ala and my Allah Rabbul Izzah grant me the tawfiq to speak in the light of the Quran in the Sunnah. Islam started in Ramadan, you would remember. Qala subhanah, inna anzalnahu fi laylati al-qadr. Qala subhanah, shahru Ramadan al-lazhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Qala subhanah, inna anzalnahu fi laylati mubarakatin inna kunna. So this is the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet is in the cave in Ramadan. And then Jibreel came in Ramadan. So Ramadan came and Ramadan went, and Ramadan came and Ramadan went. And every Ramadan, Jibreel would come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and ask him to recite the Qur'an, or the Hadith says, teach him the Qur'an. And the Rasul used to be in I'tikaf. So for the ten days, Jibreel would cover the whole Qur'an with him. And then came the 23rd Ramadan. This is on the tenth year after Hijrah. In this Ramadan, something different happened. The Rasul Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu Alayh went into I'tikaf. Jibreel came, recited the Quran, taught him the Quran cover to cover in the 10 days. And then he saw a dream that what you're seeking is ahead of you. Extend your I'tikaf. So the Rasul extended the I'tikaf by 10 days. And in the dream he had seen, his forehead was on the ground, he lifted it, and the soil and water was dripping down the blessed face. And he extended the atikaf and the rain came. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lifted his forehead from the sujood, and the soil of the earth and the water ran down his face as it was in the dream. And then in this 10 days, Jibreel recited the Quran again and made the Prophet recite it or taught him the Quran again. And this made the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam think, why twice? Why twice this year? And the Prophet is the most learned of the servants of Allah about Allah Rabbul Izzah. As such, when the Zul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yurid gives a hint 
the one to understand it most is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the hint came, almost like you're trying to solve something, you go, ah. Oh. It was that ah moment that what is the meaning of this? Why twice? And in his heart of hearts, he understood it. And this is Ramadan that Jibreel has made me recite this twice. It is the extra caution of the heavens to ensure that the correct message has been delivered and the correct message is left behind. And it means that perhaps my time has come to an end and I might be departing eminently. But the hearts of the prophets are huge, metaphorically. Like the oceans, they bear the vessels that come and go. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, didn't utter a word about this to anyone. And then, it's Ramadan. After Ramadan is the month of Shawwal. And around this time, he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal, as Sheikh Siraj Wahaj talked about. Go to Yemen and teach the people their religion. And they say, he was walking with, with Mu'adh. And Mu'adh was on the mount on his right. And the Rasul is walking next to him, giving him the advices that we heard. And then towards the end of this walk and this advice, he says, Ya Mu'adh, innaka asa Allah talqani ba'da aami hadha. O Mu'adh, it might be that you will not see me after this again. When your father tells you that you might not see me after this trip again, it tugs at the heart. It makes you sentimental, emotional. The Rasul wasn't their father. He was the dearest thing to them. You know, in battle, Talha ibn Ubaidullah stood up. He said, Ya Rasul, lower your neck. Nahri duna nahrik. Better my throat than your throat. Let the arrows hit me and not hit you, O Prophet of Allah. They would meet him and say, Fadaynaka bi abaina wa ummahatina, Ya Rasulullah. May our fathers and mothers be sacrificed for you, O Prophet. Their love for the Prophet was unmatched. Now the Rasul says, Ya Mu'adh. You might not see me after this. And he says, you might return and find my masjid and my qabr, but I mightn't be here. So they say, Mu'adh, فَبَكَى Mu'adh, and Mu'adh wept. But look at the heart. He doesn't say, Khalas Ya Rasul, I will stay here until inshallah the ajal passes. But he says, the order of the messenger has come for me to go to Yemen. I will go, I mightn't see my Rasul after. So Mu'adh went. And this was the first hint he gave to one of the Ummah. And then after Shawwal came the Qa'da, and the messengers were sent out, go and declare, make the proclamation that the Rasul is going to Hajj this year. And you must understand, the peninsula has become Muslim. And thousands have become Muslims, but not seen their Prophet not talk to their prophet, not sit with their prophet. Now is an opportunity, an excuse to go with the Rasul on this blessed journey to Hajj. So people flocked into Medina. The scholars say a hundred thousand came. Muslims from as far and wide as you can imagine into Medina to join with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this Hajj. And then four days left from Zul Qaeda. The Rasul marches out. It's a Saturday and it is Zuhr. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed Zuhr and he marched out to Dhul Hulayfa. He stayed in Dhul Hulayfa the night and in the morning after Zuhr put on his ihram and started to move towards Hajj. And Jabir ibn Abdullah says, I looked ila madda basari so far as my eyes could see between the hands of the Prophet, as in in front of the Prophet. There were people either walking or riding, and I looked at his right. So far as my eyes could see, there were Muslims going to Hajj with him, riding or walking, and on his left, and on his, and behind him. And this is almost a gift of Allah, Rabbul Izza. Like, Ya Rasul, do you remember when they used to torture you? Do you remember when they used to pelt you with stones? Do you remember when they traced your steps 
abusing you and chucking abuses at you. Today, look, look at the fruits of your toils, O oh Muhammad. The Jazeera has become Muslims. Your religion has reigned supreme. Allah Rabbul Izzah has brought about justice on the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in the Sunnah that he left. So he came out to Hajj and in this Hajj, it is the first hint he gives the Ummah. He says, خُذُوا مَنَاسِكَكُمْ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي لَا أَدْرِي لَعَلِّي لَا أَلْقَاكُمْ بَعْدَ عَامِي هَذَا بِهَذَا الْمَوْقِفِ أَبَدًا O Muslims, take the rituals of Hajj from me, for I don't know if I will be with you here ever again. And the Ashab must have cried. They say Umar cried, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu cried. That the pro These are hints that the Rasul mightn't be with us for much longer. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed the hajj and in the day of Arafat. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the Muslims and they gathered near his tent in the Namira. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out to give them his farewell speech. And what a speech it is for a prophet, the last of prophets. No more to come after him. This is it. And he is giving his parting advices. So the Muslims have gathered the best of creation after the prophets. And then he says, after Hamd and Thana, Inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'radakum haramun alaykum ka hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shahrikum hadha fi baladikum hadha. Verily, O Muslims, Muslims, your blood, Muslims, your blood, Muslims, your blood, your wealth, your honor is sacred like the sacredness of this day and this month and in this land. It is the land of the Haramain al-Sharifain. It is the land of Haram. Blood isn't allowed to be spilt in there. So like this day is sacred, so is the blood of a Muslim sacred. So is the wealth of a Muslim sacred. So is the honor of a Muslim sacred. And how cheap has become the, th the sacredest thing in the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he says, after this, all the bloods of the Jahiliyyah are under my feet today abrogated. As in all the blood feuds are cancelled. And the first blood feud that I cancel is from my own family. The one that was owed to us, I put it under my feet that is abrogated. We will not revenge, nor will we avenge, nor do we seek retaliation. We have forgiven it. Islam has reigned supreme. And then he says, all the usury and all the riba of the days of the Jahiliyyah are beneath my feet today. And the first riba that I abrogate and cancel is that of my uncle Abbas. Today it is forgotten all of it together under my feet. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, O oh Muslims, be good to your women. Muslims learn to be good to your women because you took them on the word of Allah Rabbul Izza and you, Allah made them halal for you through his word. So honor the word of Allah Rabbul Izza with regards to your women. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Taraktu fikum, I have left amidst you something that if you hold on to it, you won't ever go astray. Kitab Allah, the book of Allah, Rabbul Izzah. Wa fi lafzin kitab Allahi wa sunnati. Kitab Allah in my tradition and in another kitab Allahi wa itrat ahl al-bayt. Kitab Allah, the book of Allah and the lineage of the uh, family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then towards the end, he says, you will be asked with regards to me. You will be asked with regards to me in front of Allah Rabbul Izzah. فَمَاذَا أَنْتُمْ قَائِلُونَ What will you say that day? What will you say to your Lord about me? And the Ummah is sitting at this stage, 144,000 are sitting in front of him. So they said, we will say, بَلَّغْتَ الرِّسَالَةِ وَأَدَّيْتَ الْأَمَانَةِ وَنَصَحْتَ الْأُمَّةِ We will say that you conveyed the message. We will say that you advised the Ummah. We will say that you gave the revelation so then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked up towards the heavens and says allahumma fashhad allahumma fashhad 
Allahumma fashhad, O oh Allah, bear witness that I have conveyed the message. O oh Allah, bear witness that I have given the advice. O oh Allah, bear witness that I have completed the religion. And as he, in, as he utters the words, Jibreel comes with the verses, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al-Islam deena. Today the religion has been perfected. Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, and I have manifested my favors upon you, wa raditu lakum al-Islam deena. In Islam I have chosen as a religion for you. And Umar ibn al-Khattab hearing the verses cried, he goes, there's nothing but destruction after perfection. So with this, and the Ummah has now heard that the Prophet Sallallahu is going, and this speech in itself is a goodbye, and then the next day came the day of Yawmun Nahr, and in the day of Nahr, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up again to speak, and gave almost the same speech again, and towards the end of it, Jibreel came, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا When the divine aid came in victory and you saw mankind enter the religion in multitudes so glorify the praise of your Lord and atone and repent and make istighfar فَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ فَأَلَّهُ رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ is of forgiving most merciful and as he hears the verses he tells Jibreel he says, it is as though my Lord is giving me my own condolences. It is as though that my Lord is saying, prepare for the Akhirah, ya Muhammad. And the Mu'addab Jibreel, the well-mannered Jibreel, says, O oh, Prophet, the Akhirah is better for you than here. So, he came back. The month of Hajj finished. And he came back towards... Medina al Munawwara, the month of Muharram was normal. After that, on the early days of Safar, on the month of Safar, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the Mount of Uhud where the Shuhada of Uhud are buried. And he made dua for them. Such a longing dua. And they say the dua was like a farewell both for them and for the living. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned back to Medina al-Munawwara. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards the 28th night or 27th or 28th of Safar called Abu Muwayhiba. And Abu Muwayhiba used to be a slave of the Prophet which he released and set free. So Abu Muwayhiba was summoned. يا أبا مويهبة إن الله تبارك وتعالى أمرني أن يستغفر لأهل هذا البقي فانطلق معي الله has ordered me to seek forgiveness for the people in the graveyard of the baqi so come with me so Abu Muwayhiba said I went with him middle of the night and you want to learn loyalty learn it from your Rasul they are dead and buried he could have just moved on with life but no any chance he got he would go to their graves and make dua for them Aisha says one night he came ruwaydan ruwaydan next to, in, to, to my bed like tiptoeing to make sure he doesn't wake me up and then he came near me he saw me asleep he took his sandals walked back out ruwaydan ruwaydan quietly quietly and as he walked out Aisha is awake because she knows ruwaydan ruwaydan you know so so he, he, she's thinking, where is he going? And jealousy, the first thing that comes to, you know, a lady's head and forgive me for this. Um, so she followed, she put on the, the hijab and, you know, followed the Prophet Sallallahu thinking he's going to another wife's house because I am asleep. So she followed him and he ended up in the graveyard raising his hands to the Zul Arsh al-Majid, making dua for the dead Muslims. Oh Allah, forgive them. Oh Allah, bless them. And so tonight... On this night of Shawwal, uh, this night of Safar, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is back in the Baqi. And Abu Muwayhiba is with him. And then he greets them. Assalamu alaykum ya ahl al-maqabir. Greetings to you. Peace be unto you. O oh, dwellers of the graves. And then he says, glad tidings to you and what you are in. 
compared to what the people outside are in. Aqbalat al-fitan, calamities are about to be unleashed. Fitnas are coming upon my ummah. Kaqita al-layl al-mudlim, like a chunk of the dark night. One will follow the other. Al-akhiru sharrum min al-ula. The last will be worse than the beginning. And then walking a little further, he says, Ya Abu Muwayhiba, O Abu Muwayhiba, Allah Rabbul Izza gave me the choice. Gave me the choice to live in this world and have eternity into it and then go to Jannah or to meet my Lord and go to Jannah. So Abu Muwayhiba says, Bi Abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah, by my mom and dad be sacrificed for you, O Prophet. Choose the dunya, choose to stay here, stay with us, see your ummah flourish, see your Im ummah grow, guide your ummah, and then go to Jannah towards the end. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَأَخْتَرْتُ لِقَاءَ Rabbi, I chose the meeting and the appointment of my Lord instead. I want to go to the Zul Arsh al-Majid instead. And then he says, he went home. And the next day, there's a funeral in the Baqi, same Baqi, same graveyard in Medina. And he goes, he followed the funeral procession. And then as soon as he came back from it, his head started to ache and fever started to grip him. And they say fever so intense that you would put your hand on his turban and feel the heat from outside the turban. So he's in the house of Maimuna radiallahu anha when the sickness started. And uh, for 14 days he is sick. For 14, the period of sickness lasts for 14 days or 13 days. And then, so, during, so he leaves during the day and he goes to the house of Aisha and when he enters she says wa ra'sa oh my head so the prophet says bal ana wa ra'sa ya Aisha oh Aisha no my head is the one that is hurting Aisha says my head is hurting the prophet said no my head is hurting and then they had a little conversation then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went back and for the next 11 days in that sickness and in that fever and in that headache, intense headache, you will see intense headache. The Prophet ﷺ still fulfilled all his obligations and duties. He would still attend the salah and lead the salah. He would still counsel, he would still advise, he would still visit his wives, he would still judge. For it, and the, uh, illness intense. And every day he used to say, where am I tomorrow? Whose house am I in tomorrow? And first they didn't realize, but then they thought there's a house he wants to be in. Maybe he's saying, whose house am I? He's looking for a house. Who's? So they said, be wherever you want to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, if you permit, I want to be in the house of Aisha. So Fadl ibn Abbas and Ali ibn Abi Talib um, came under his arms. And they say he couldn't walk. So his feet were dragging as they carried him on, the, on the, the ground and they entered the house of Aisha radiallahu anha where he would spend the last week of his life and Aisha radiallahu anha imagine a worried wife and the Rasul is loved by them the, the Rasul don't imagine you can love as they loved their love was different so he says she would recite the mawidat and the dua and the adhkar and then look at the fiqh of Aisha. She used to blow it on the hands of the Prophet. And then rub his own hands on his body. Because her idea was, his hands are more blessed than my hands. He can't recite, so I will recite. But the barakah is in his hands, so I will rub his own hands on his body. And this continued until um, five days or on, until the Wednesday, so he's come to the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, and just five days before his demise, he wants to give an advice to the ummah. He prayed the salah normally until a Thursday. And Thursday came, he went to the masjid, he did Fajr, Zuhr, in the same state where he's being dragged. He did Fajr, Zuhr, Asr, Magh Maghrib, and after Maghrib, Isha came. So Bilal gave the adhan for the salah to start. And the Prophet وسلم, said, pour water on me. So they poured water on him and he got up and he fainted. And then people are waiting that the Rasul will come. So then after a while he gained consciousness. So he said, have they prayed? 
They said, no, how will they pray? They're waiting for the imam, for the rasul to come. So he said, put water on me. So they put water on him again. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stood up to pray, then fell down again and fainted. And then again, and then he said, muru Abu Bakr fal yusalli bin nas, order Abu Bakr to lead the salah for the people. And then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cannot lead the salah anymore after this. So the last few days, the Prophet ﷺ was not able to lead the salah. And then five days before his death, he ﷺ asked for water to be brought from seven different buckets, seven different wells. And they put it on top of him. And then he tied his head and took his people that were carrying him. And he said, take me, I need to speak to the people. So they went and they set him on the member. And this is... Al-Rajih, the last time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has sat on the member. So he said, and then he says, لعن الله اليهود والنصارى اتخذوا قبور أنبيائهم مسجدها Allah cursed the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of their prophets as a place of worship. Don't take my grave as an object of worship after me. Muslims, the last advice of your prophet, his last wishes, stop grave worshiping. Stop, don't worship my grave. Don't make it an object of worship. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man kuntu, whoever from you that I have whacked, I have hit with a whip, then here is my back. Take your qisas from me now instead of in the court of Allah Rabbul Izza. Whoever I have taken in a wealth from you, ask for your wealth back so I can return it. Don't ask it of me in the day of judgment. Whoever I have dishonored or defamed, he is my honor. Take your qisas from me now. So one person stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you owe me three dirhams. So he said, pay him his dirhams and his family repaid his dirhams. Then the salat of Zuhr came. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed and then came back on the member. And then sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said again, whoever I have wronged, come and take your wrong from me now. Whoever I have struck, come and strike me back. Whoever I have taken their wealth, come, he is my wealth, take it. Whoever I have defamed or dishonored, he is my honor, come and take your, your qisas from it. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah Rabbul Izza gave a servant the choice between this dunya wal khuldu fiha and eternity in it. Or the meeting of his Lord, the servant chose the meeting of his Lord. And he doesn't say me, he says a servant. So Abu Bakr is sitting there and he starts to cry and he says, فَدَيْنَاكَ بِأَهْبَائِنَا وَأُمَّهَاتِنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ May our mothers and fathers be sacrificed for you, O Prophet. O Prophet, we will sacrifice our households for you. And the Prophet says, عَلَى رِسْلِكَ يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ عَلَى رِسْلِكَ يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ Sit, O Abu Bakr. Sit ya Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu sits and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says let all the doors and the doors used to open in the masjid as these doors open into the hall let all these doors be walled except for the door of Abu Bakr let all the doors into the masjid be closed except for the door of Abu Bakr and then he says إِنَّ أَمَنَّ النَّاسِ عَلَيَّ بِمَالِهِ وَصُحْبَتِهِ أَبُو بَكَرْ وَلَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا مِّنَ الْبَشَرِ خَلِيلًا لَاتَّخَذْتُ أَبَا بَكْرٍ خَلِيلًا The person that I am indebted to the most from his wealth and his companionship is Abu Bakr. In another hadith, whoever we owed anything we repaid except for the debt of Abu Bakr. The debt of Abu Bakr we leave to Allah Rabbul Izzah to repay. And now he says, if I were to choose a friend except for the Zul Arsh al Majid, I would have chosen Abu Bakr as a friend. If I could choose a bestie, it would have been Abu Bakr. But mine is Allah Rabbul Izza, and for him the companionship of Islam is sufficient. And then people, people were wondering, why is Abu Bakr crying in the middle of all this? Why is he weeping? The Prophet's not talking about himself, he's talking about a person. And then they say when he finally died, we realized that Abu Bakr was the most learned of us in the murad of Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two days before his death, and this is a Saturday, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt rejuvenated, revived, strong. And the Muslims 
are standing in salah in the zuhr and they're praying and then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam wanted to join the salah so the ashab carried him and there was a commotion in the masjid the rasul has entered and uh, you know days have passed the rasul hasn't come now he is entering the masjid and then there's noise in the in in the rows and Abu Bakr realized that maybe the Prophet ﷺ is here. So he stepped back, the Mu'addab Abu Bakr. He stepped back and the Rasul placed his hands on him. He said, push them back forward. And he sat on the left side of Abu Bakr. So he would pray with isharat and with his head. And Abu Bakr anhu would take up the moves. And then the Muslims would follow Abu Bakr anhu. And then this Saturday passed. The next day is Sunday. And Sunday, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam released all his servants. Any servant he had, he released them. And he had seven dinars at home. He said, Aisha, give this in sadaqah. And when he used to faint, he used to wake back up. Did you give the seven dinar in sadaqah? She said, no, we were busy with your sickness. He said, give the seven dinar in sadaqah, ya Aisha. And then again, he fainted when he came around. Have you given the seven dinars in sadaqah? How will I stand before Allah, Rabbul Izzah, and in my house is seven dinars? Give it in sadaqah, ya Aisha. So she, radiallahu anha, gave it in sadaqah. And this is Sunday night now. And at night, she didn't have money to burn oil in the lamp so she borrowed it from her neighbor and then comes Monday morning and the masjid is full to the brim with the people praying and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha and then as the people have entered the masjid he feels a sense of strength a sense of recovery this happiness so he opened the curtain the curtain and the door of the room of Aisha would open into the masjid. So he opened the curtain. And like the sun comes in a cloudy day or the moon at its full, it is like such a joyous occasion. The face of the Prophet wasallam looking into the masjid. So the ashab say, we almost lost our salah. Like we almost came out of salah. Faraham bi Rasulillah at the joy of the Prophet sallallahu So he motioned, continue the salah and put the curtain down. And then the ashab came to him. Alhamdulillah, O Prophet, you're looking good. Abu Bakr came. O Prophet, you're looking strong. Alhamdulillah. So he says, Alhamdulillah, I'm feeling better today. So the, he says, give me permission to go visit my family a kilometer and a half away from the masjid in Sunh. He had another wife there. Let me go visit them. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Go. Other people came with their cases. The Prophet permitted. And then, so this is after Salat al Fajr. And then the Prophet ﷺ fell unconscious again. And Aisha radiallahu anha says, The Prophet ﷺ's head was reclining. Bayna sahri wa nahri. The Prophet ﷺ, his head was on my chest. And he was going into consciousness and out of consciousness. And then he looked up towards the ceiling. And then he said, Allahumma rafiq al-a'la. And Aisha said, I remembered. He had said that all prophets are given the choice to choose the eternity in this world or the meeting of their Lord. And as he uttered it, Allahumma rafiq al-a'la, I realized he has made his choice. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the fever had run sky high. And there was a bowl of water. He used to put his hand into it and rub it on his forehead like this. And he used to say, la ilaha illallah, inna lil sakarat. There is no God but Allah. Death has its pangs. And then... In this situation, his daughter Fatima al Zahra entered. So he sat her next to him and summoned her, beckoned her, come. So she came near and he whispered in her ear and she held her face and sobbed. She cried bitterly. And then, seeing her situation, he called her again, come. So she came again and then he whispered something else into her ear. Aisha asked her later on, what did he say? He said, first he said, 
that Jibreel made me recite the Quran twice this year. It feels like the ajal is close. You will be the first of my family to join me. So I cried. And then he said, Ama tardina an takuni sayyidatin nisa'i ahli al-jannah. Aren't you pleased to be the queen of the Muslim women of Jannah? So she said, I laughed. And looking at his situation, she says, Wa karba abata, or the calamity on my father. So the Prophet wasallam said, La karba ala abuki ba'd al yawm. After today, there won't be any more calamities on your father. And in this situation, Abdul Rahman, the son of Abu Bakr, entered the room, and with him is a siwak the thing you clean your teeth with. And um, the Prophet loved the siwak, he loved cleanliness. He, even when he used to sleep, he used to place it under his, next to his pillow, next to his head. And when he used to turn at night, he used to use the siwak. So looking, he looked at the siwak longingly. In his head, I am going to the majesty of the ones most high. Let me siwak. So Aisha said, I noticed him looking at it. So I said, do you want it, O Prophet? And he nodded, yes. So I took it. And I softened it with my own mouth and my own saliva. And then I cleaned his teeth with it. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, placing his hand in the water, rubbed it on his face. And he said, La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. And then, as Aisha says, he looked up as though he saw something. And there are other ahadith that say, Jibreel came to him, make your choice, O Muhammad. And he says, Allahumma rafiq al-a'la. Aisha says, I quickly made dua, the recitations, to rub on him, to say, oh Allah, cure him. He said, no, but sallillaha rafiq al-a'la. But ask Allah to give me the companionship of the ones most high. So then, in this situation, with the siwak having just been completed, and he having made his choice, and the hand trying to put water on its face, the hand fell. And Aisha radiallahu anha realized that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. And of the cry, the heartache, you can't imagine it. So then she sent for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And um, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that as the hand fell, the room became filled with fragrance. A smell, a, a, a perfume, a scent covered the room. And Um Salama says, I placed my hand on his chest. And because he's in fever, in sweating, and I lifted my hand. And Jum'a came and Jum'a went. I used to eat and make wudu. And the perfume and the scent of that perfume wouldn't go away. And this is the sunnah of the Zul Arsh al-Majid. When a righteous soul departs, the angels wrap it in a cloth perfumed with the most elegant of perfumes. And the perfume covered the room. And then Hafsa radiallahu anha sends for her father, Umar ibn al-Khattab. Aisha sends for her father, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, who is a kilometer and a half away. So the first one to enter the room after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Umar radiallahu anha. Aisha says he knocked and asked permission because it's the house of Aisha. So he says, she says, I gave him permission and look at the detail and pulled my hijab over me. In the time of gham, yes, in the time of gham, why aren't you beating yourself for Aisha? Your Habiba has passed away because this wasn't the teachings of the Rasul. They took the gham and the hum and the difficulties with Islam, with the call that Allah Rabbul Izza had left for them. So she covered herself. And Umar came with another Sahabi. Um, and Mughira, Mughira ibn Shu'ba. So he came and looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Wa ghashya. And another, oh, so unconscious, so deeply unconscious. You are so unconscious. And then he stood up and tried to come out of the house. And Mughira said, Ya Umar, Mata Rasulullah, he is not fainted, he has died. So he said, Kadabt, you are lying. You are lying. 
إِنَّكَ رَجُلٌ تَحُوشُكَ فِتْنَةِ You're a person that fitna has engulfed. The Prophet won't die. He has gone to his Lord and will return as Musa returned. And he will cut the right hands and the left legs of those munafiks who say he died. He can't accept the death of the Prophet And in his denial, he took out his sword. Whoever says the Prophet died, I will cut his neck off. Oh, the Prophet hasn't died. And he's shouting in the middle of the masjid, in the middle of this commotion, and the people have gathered around him. Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, realizing the situation, says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O oh people, is there anyone amidst you who has heard? From, and it's a confusing time because they don't know what's happening. Umar, one of the greatest of the Ummah, is shouting, he hasn't died. And the news is coming from the house, he has died. So Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib stood up, O oh people, is, is there anyone who has heard anything from the Prophet to the effect that I won't die? And they said no. And Umar said no. So then the, uh, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib said, I make you witnesses over yourselves that Allah Rabbul Izza, no the Prophet has given any guarantee that he will live forever. As such, the Prophet wasallam has died. This was the first utterance that it came. And then Abu Bakr Siddiq came. Radiyallahu anka ya Abu Bakr. He came from Sunh and he entered the room of his daughter. And the other wives who were sitting there covered. And then he went and the Prophet is lying. Salawat Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. His face glowing bright. So he removed the cover from it. And then he radiallahu anhu leant over and kissed the blessed forehead of the Rasul. And then looking up towards the heavens he said, Wa khalilaha, wa khalilaha. Oh my dear friend, since childhood they're friends, in the Ghar they were friends. He gave him his young daughter in marriage. He was the closest friend of the Prophet, the confidant of the Rasul, his best. Oh dear friend. And then he leant down and kissed him again. And then he said, Oh you who are chosen, oh the chosen one. And then he kissed him again. And then this time leant over and kissed him and he said, Oh, my prophet, oh, Rasul. And then he says, the death that Allah Rabbul Izza prescribed upon you, you have tasted it. Allah won't let you taste this twice, death twice. And what the son of Khattab says is nothing. And then he, radiallahu anhu, walked out of this room. And Umar is still shouting. So he said, ala rislika ya Umar, sit, O Umar. Sit, O Umar, and Umar ibn al-Khattab is still shouting. So then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, radiyallahu anhu, walked to the member in, front, in the front of the masjid. And then he gives his timeless words to the ummah. Whoever was worshipping Muhammad, understand that Muhammad has died. But for those of you who are worshipping Allah, understand Allah, Rabbul Izza, is eternal and doesn't die. And then he read, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِمَّا تَأَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يُضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا Muhammad is not but the Prophet. Prophets have come before him. Prophets have died before him. If he dies or is killed, will you forsake the deen? Will you turn back on your heels? And then Umar says, it's, it's as though I had never heard the verse and hearing it he felt the truth sank. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. And in one of the hadith, he says, Is this in the Quran, Ya Abu Bakr? And Abu Bakr says, Naam. And Allah Rabbul Izza says, Innaka mayyitun wa innahum mayyitun. You will die and they will also die. No one will live forever. And in this juncture here, in the early, early moments, Omar says, O oh people, what I said was wrong. My bay'ah to Abu to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he is your sheikh and your elder. Although the bay'ah isn't made there, but it's the first time the utterance came, and your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away on Monday at the age of 63 on uh, al rajih on the 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal. And I stand here looking around at the room and there's a lot of emotions and there's a lot of love for this man. And, and Allah knows he's dearer to us than life itself. And my Allah, Rabbul Izzah, give us the tawfiq to 
act on his teachings and implement his teachings and bring his sunnah into our lives. We have done our little effort to give you one day of injection about the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a full day from its morn to its evening. May Allah Rabbul Izzah accept it from us and from you. And by the grace of Allah Rabbul Izzah, we ask the Dhul Arsh al-Majid that Ya Rabb, we missed out on the company of the Prophet in this life. Don't let us miss out in the next one. That resurrect us with him. The Arabs say, Ahzanu qalbi la tazul, hatta ubashar bil qabul, wa ra'a kitabi bil yameen, wa taqarra'ini bil rasul. The anxieties of my heart will persist until I am given the good news of acceptance that Allah is happy and my book is given and my right and my eyes rest on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Rabb resurrect us with him for our love for him although our deeds have a lot of shortcoming May Allah Rabbul Izza accept your efforts and our efforts and guide the Ummah in its entirety and cure the ill of the Ummah and forgive the dead of this Ummah Barakallahu Feekum um, Tomorrow insha'Allah Ta'ala we will start at the same time. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Siraj Wahaj was, uh, met him yesterday and he said that um, usually in the mornings the first speaker gets a small crowd because people haven't woken up. And I said, not in Perth. Uh, so don't shame me tomorrow. Huh? Uh, come in time, inshallah, and Sheikh Siraj Wahaj will be the first speaker. And uh, we've dragged him and Allah bless him and have mercy upon him. He's come all the way from New York. Um, so if he's come from that far a distance, you can definitely come from, uh, you know, a few kilometers here and there. Uh, that is it for today. Barakallahu feena wa feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.